Should we, should we react to this Kiriko players video chat? It, is this going to make my head hurt? If I watch this, Let, let's talk about Kiriko. Now, I, I've played a lot of Kiriko. I think I hit rank 30 on her. She is the best character in the game, and it's not even close. Like, she can do anything. She can fit into any situation. Kiriko Suzu is the strongest ability they have ever added to Overwatch, and they continue to double down and accidentally buff it. But what do you expect from this developer team? All right, let's see what they do. Let's let's see this video. She is a hero that has a very low win rate, but that people just say is broken. And there's a reason for that. 49% is not that low, but... And it is valid to complain about Kiriko. Starting with the first post I saw, it was for Overwatch Anonymous. Great place to look to, to see people go ham on each other. But the post was, people need to stop complaining about Kiriko headshot when a lot of heroes have the ability to two-shot. It's not like you're going to hit every single kunai. People just don't like that a support hero can do this. You are truly a Kiriko main. I actually don't know if Kiriko two-tapping is the problem. The problem is that she gets to take all these duels for free and she gets to take them at no risk, right? Can't out-duel a Suzu. No matter what you do, you can't outplay that ability. You can't even out-duel her swift step. So if she takes the duel against an Ana or a lot of these characters, her swift step cleanses her too so she really has two cleanses three cleanses actually on a 15 second span because she'll get two teleports in that span be able to wall climb and can use her suzu so she like she cannot get punished in the duel and that's what's not fair about it she is the best duelist in the game in the support role and she's better than every dps at it it's it's embarrassing one of the responses was almost anyone remotely decent knows the kunai damage is busted. it's not it's not and necessarily the damage it's the risk to, see to, to actually get close to do that kind of damage not throw it across the map and diff widows it's almost ironic that widow has damage fall off and kunai doesn't now kunai's a projectile well to be fair the damage is really strong like it, it is really strong like but it's not the damage itself and that's that's necessarily busted again it's the risk and the fact that she doesn't have to take any risks when taking these duels and it's so minor because she just gets to get out for free because she can tp through walls and stuff so like if you're gonna have that damage there has to be significant risk associated with it and there's no risk at all associated with it is that kariko's damage is just not that great if you compare it to something like cassidy's primary or something closer that's a projectile could be torbjorn's primary it's quite literally worse in every single way she only gets actual decent damage when getting a critical and if she does not get a critical her damage is actually awful unless she's the best 1v1 in the game her damage is not awful her damage is she, she's the best duelist in the game her damage is not awful period point blank war thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game to ever exist guys this game is actually nuts when you break down what is in it and you can get it for free on any platform xbox well, not any platform. I guess Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Big 3, baby. This game is sick. Listen to this, guys. Listen to this. There are over 2,000 vehicles, helicopters, ships, tanks, you name it, right? 2,000, ranging from any era, 1920s. I'm a history nut, so like I definitely go in World War II. Like, that's just me, right? 1920s to the present. It is freaking sick. They can do anything, and they've got the coolest customization system out of any of these types of games that you'll ever see. And not only are those customization systems sick, where you have, like, hundreds of different skins for whatever it is that you want to use, not only are those sick, but in terms of actual gameplay, they have fast-paced matches. You like more fast-paced game modes. They have formats for that. Or if you're more slow-paced, tactical, super realistic stuff, you also have that. So they really cover everything that you need. The graphics are insane. They display up to 4K in game. And you can do it all from your mouse and keyboard. You don't even have to be um, necessarily on controller. It's super accessible to you. So listen, guys. This game is free. You can get it on all platforms. The gameplay is sick. I personally, like, I'm, I'm a World War II guy. I, 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 don't, I didn't like World War II, but I love to study the subject. And I always thought that a lot of the vehicles were super, super sick. Um, my buddy Blake, who plays a lot of games like this, actually went to go see one of the old jets in Oregon. And it was just absolutely insane. So I'm super into that classical stuff. Do yourself a favor. Check this stuff out. It's going to help out the channel. It'll help you. And it's it's actually a really sick looking game. So thanks to Sean for the video today, guys. Everything you need is gonna be down in the description. Check it out. War Thunder, freaking sick game. Play War Thunder for free right now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link, and you'll get the large bonus pack using that link. It's all down in the description. Check it out, guys. Thanks for sponsoring today's video. Peace out. Kiriko is getting constant criticals with perfect accuracy, which is kind of really silly and unrealistic to expect. It is realistic to expect because her kunai hitbox is double the size of all the others, so it, it's very realistic to expect that. Too. But to get back on track, the reason that kunai has no damage fall off is, of course, because it's a projectile, and projectile yeah, the, the weapons, damage fall -off's the not the problem. Part, don't have any damage fall off. This you, is primarily because like, they... you, you don't want to give Kiri fall off. Like her, her damage again. It's, it's the problem is not the damage. Like, you, like that skill expression is what gives Kiriko an identity, and you want to keep that. That's why I love playing Kiri, right? I acknowledge she's broken, but that's what made Kiri playing Kiri fun, like in season one for me. And like I, I hit like rank 30 on the character. Like she's really fun. 
And I think I hit rank 11 on Brig Kiri in season three. It, she's fun. Projectiles in general are just very inconsistent and random. And because of the inherent randomness, it's something that's just annoying to fight against. It's not broken, it's just annoying to randomly get two tapped from across the map. And I think that really defines Kiriko as a character. It's not that she's broken or overpowered. She's just obnoxious and annoying. And the inconsistent- She is broken and overpowered. See, th those things aren't mutually exclusive, which I believe is the right term. Like, you can maintain Kiriko's hero identity while making her a fair hero. There's no universe where a support hero should be the best duelist in the game. So he's right and he's wrong. He's right in that they need to maintain Kiriko's identity, but she needs to be more of a glass cannon like Zenyatta, who also has that level of damage output. But she's not even a glass cannon. She just gets, she's like a hyper mobile one. Like, like, the problem is not getting too tapped across the yeah, map. It's that she gets in mid-range and is a better duelist than every other hero in the game. Kind of, before I talk about Suzu and Swift Step and how those abilities are also very stupid, first, let's just get it out of the way and talk about the Metro clip. This clip is a horrible example of a problem that is kind of correct, mainly because he doesn't really give a point. He just kind of complains about Kriko existing because he died for doing something stupid. I'll display the clip for you. I'm playing out. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't stupid. No, you're wrong. This was not stupid. See, you don't understand over. You don't understand what made Overwatch great. This is a perfect example of why Kiri's stupid. Good players used to do these flanks all the time. It's a high risk play. But what made Overwatch so beautiful is that guys like me, guys like the Fran, guys like who were dominant on ladder, could force those players to duel them in this situation. And he's created a pinch. And he's a soldier, so he can run away. This, in a way, is big brain. But it's taking a huge risk for no reason. I agree, he doesn't have to do it. But on third point Gibraltar, like creating this crossfire soldier where you're making them come commit for you, and if he runs them all the way back to spawn, by the time they finally get to the cart and it's still two-fight territory, he would have respawned and come back. And he has a chance of winning this duel. And frankly, he did win the duel against the Kiriko. It is a perfect example because he makes them commit on him because if they don't commit on him, they then get pinched from the back and they'll lose every single fight on this point. And he won that duel against the Kiriko. But because she's a Kiriko, the biggest problem is that she gets to take these duels at no risk regardless of the skill of the player. That's what makes it stupid. It makes complete sense. You just don't understand what made Overwatch beautiful, especially at the skill ceiling of the game, if that's your claim. Ridiculous that he can do that, right? He is absolute shitter. And then, and then he, he still kills one. I, I, listen, listen to Metro. Listen to Metro. Right? He dies because it's fair. If the Kiri commits, she can just get out. And he's right. After missing everything. Is that was the perfect example. So the first thing, if you didn't notice, his team is defending third point in this clip, just in case you did not know that. When he tries to poke, gets rolled, and then tries to disengage and run because he's like, playing a character that has mobility on a zero second cooldown. Then Kiriko goes after him. He pops healing stays in, fights her and off, he beats and then she just teleports back to her team. Then Sojo just decides to int- Yeah, through walls. In with slide and lose the 1v1. And then the Kiriko comes back exactly. because he's still just in their back line exactly. trying to run down main, and then Kiriko kills him. So the point he's trying to make here is that Kiriko can go in, make a lot of mistakes, and then get out for free, and that that's why the game is broken, when in the clip, he is also making a ton of mistakes. No, he did not make a mistake. He made zero mistakes. He would have won the duel on the Kiri, kited, and held his angle. He would have gotten rewarded for 20, 30 seconds off the clock, and they would have had to peel back and deal with him. He would have gotten enormous value. You are completely wrong. You are completely wrong. That is completely incorrect. And I say that as a player who's top 50 every role each season. He outskilled you there, no, no disrespect, because you can't even comprehend why that was a good play. There was no mistakes there. It's only a mistake if he dies, and where he's baiting every ba everybody back and wasting their time, that is so valuable if you do it right. But the risk to him doing that is insanely high, and he only gets away with it because he's a veteran over- and I know people give Metro a lot of shit, he's not one of the best players in the world, but that he's been a GM, Masters, like, high-ranked player for 30 seasons. He understands that taking that flank is actually a good thing, especially if he- only if he can execute on it, though, and he does, but he doesn't get rewarded for executing on it because Kiriko gets to get away for free. If he kills the Kiri first, and then the soldier comes and dies, and he gets to run away up to the high ground to reset, right? He's still holding this angle. So they'd have to probably waste, a, like, 40 seconds to a minute without the ult economy exchange just going to clear him. He takes one minute off the clock, which is 25% of the time bank. A massive number for one play. And you're saying it's a mistake. This is how people climb in ranks taking angles and this is the only way you can get value on a character like soldier in this situation my favorite response from him 
is people complaining about the aim in this clip, while this is actually very good accuracy against her stick hitbox, He's right. while C misses every shot. There's also tweets from other people complaining that people were nitpicking Metro's gameplay, while not nitpicking the Kiriko's gameplay, Facts. so I figured why not do both. So let's go over the clip. While I can't really see her perspective, going based on the sound effects, Kiriko throws 12 kunai in the clip and lands three of them with one of them being a critical She doesn't kill him, doesn't matter. a total accuracy of 25%. Meanwhile, the Metro fires approximately- the, the accuracy is pointless. The accuracy does not matter. The issue is the risk to reward. So, not, like, people complaining about Metro's aim or the Kiri's aim. Doesn't matter. Ultimately, he would have won the duel and she got to get out for free. That's the bottom line. None of the details matter. Yeah, Nothing against Amaterasu either, personally. I just want to make that clear. So yes, I I'm attacking the arguments, the not the person. actually playing better than Metro is, and yet C is the one that is forced back. And that's not even to mention how Soldier is probably one of the hardest heroes to hit with projectiles, just because he has a 50% speed boost on a zero second cooldown, making it very difficult to hit him. And a He just proceeds to run down Bane and then sees the Kiriko and then goes and runs into a corner instead of trying to run away. Whereas if he ran away instead of trying to hide in a corner, he'd actually have a pretty good chance of getting out just because he can strafe and zigzag. Like, have you ever seen the thing where if you get chased by a crocodile, you just gotta like zigzag? He could do that with like 50% extra movement speed. And that's what you do. If you're being chased by a Kiriko, you just zigzag. So he has a projectile that only does damage if he gets a critical. So if you run away, well, sprinting that, a soldier, that, that doesn't change. That this is this well, doesn't matter to the point. Very easily, because first off, you're just very hard to hit. And this, also, okay, this is this this ha this addresses nothing of what he's taught. This is all yapping. This is what support players do a lot of the time. And I'm not trying to get personal with this guy here again. To be clear, but they all they re they will always try to bait you with bullshit random information that has nothing to do with the point. Nothing that's said here addresses any point that Metro made. It's all gibberish to make it look like it's saying something, but it's not saying shit. This means nothing. None of this matters. It's all senseless yapping, right? It's hit you if it's not a critical. And I say this as a Kiri player. And then he could have just dropped his healing station, which is stronger than any support ability in the game. And people want to act like the Kiri. <sighs> These are the people the devs listen to. These are the people the devs listen to. Okay, if this was just a clip about Swift Step, then I would agree. Because I do not like Swift Step, I think it's a bad design. But Kiriko chased after a target that was 80 health. Metro is then able to almost get away because he has a movement ability. The, the whole problem of his clip is that is is Swift Step. That was his point. You just ignore the- you are, you are, you are not being intellectually honest in this video. His whole point was actually got the TP away at the beginning. And now you're talking about the end when he was ranting about why that was broken and he'd already lost his focus and got his value. That's not his point. You're, you refuse to acknowledge the first part of his point, which is the swift step that you're talking about. On a zero second cooldown, then drops healing station, which heals for 200 health, almost double the amount that Bap's regen burst does. He then proceeds Yeah, but it's to not burst, but it's not burst. It's not burst. Every single bullet while firing cooldowns into the ground to effectively deal damage instead of having- Because you can't fucking hit Kiriko's hitbox! So you shoot the helix at the ground to get chip damage at her and knock her into the air so she has a straight trajectory because you can't strafe in the air. That is your best way to hit this broken character. That's the best 1v1 in the game. You don't understand a thing about playing DPS. You actually hit them and then still wins the fight. If this clip shows cases anything, it's just how forgiving Soldier 76 is to play. Nah, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But people with these takes deserve to get flamed. This is st a straight up idiotic take. You said that in front of Blizzard in discourse, right? They would tell you that you're the problem. Even though the reality is, there's no other way to describe this take other than idiotic, because it is idiotic. And that's the soft culture that's been created in this game. Drawn in an effort to try and cope and also try and rage bait, Metro made this tweet, which is this video is rage bait. inaccurate. First of all, he initially tries to compare hit scan to projectile, and then later tries to correct it, saying this is not the gotcha moment you were hoping for. Meanwhile, none of these images are actually accurate whatsoever. Maybe he's too used to playing Soldier 76 and aiming at the ground, but you cannot hit under. Okay. Tracer's feet and hit her with projectile or hit scan for that matter. These images are just kind of complete bullshit. What they do, you, do if she, Yeah, if she jumps though and is in the air, you can. It's blocked by this. So, okay. You say Metro is a hit scan player, he doesn't. What about me? What if I told you it's easier to hit headshots on Kiriko than any other projectile hero in the game besides maybe May? Because May doesn't have fall off either. I was rank one on Hanzo, Goat's meta, on DPS and open queue. I was I hit rank one on Doom in the roll queue beta. It rank 
13 on May and was the highest ranked May player on the North American ladder. I was the highest ranked Echo player on the North American ladder. I am one of the most flexible, I am the most flexible projectile streamer and the highest ranked one in the entire Overwatch community. I, as the highest ranked projectile, like kind of mainstream creator, I guess, if you will, and have been for 30 seasons plus, what if I told you that Kiriko is the easiest hero to hit headshots in by a large margin and it's super noticeable? And I've played support role. He, I will tell the whole Overwatch me right now, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, so I apologize if it comes off like that, but he, his argument is about Metro's credibility as a player and he's saying he's a hitscan player. So I'm only saying this for the sake of his argument. Would you say the same thing to me? Now, I'm not saying some absolute dog shit player could come on and just be a GM player on, on, on Kiriko, right? That's not what I'm saying. But compared to the other characters in the game, at an even skill level, which is how you have to measure it, she's by far the easiest to do it on. The size of the hitbox, but in reality, they just put a big border around the character and then made it bigger, which is something anyone could do. Just open Photoshop and just give Tracer a pink border. Then you can make the Kuriko Kunai hitbox as big or as small as you wanted it to. Basically, none of this is accurate at all. But, but again, I really do not want to again, get again, I, I wouldn't, I also, to be clear, would not change your hitboxes yet. I think the proper thing to do is to probably like just look at the risk of Swift Step, look at Suzu, like. Like, I, I, I don't necessarily think that changing her crit hitbox is the answer yet. I like her ability to do damage. So that gives her the identity like Zen, but she needs to be punishable and not get away with everything for free is the problem. Just look at this, and uh, this is not a critical for some reason. You're but hitting her this arms. This is just not a critical. I'm pretty sure you're hitting her arms. But it's only sometimes not a critical. I think if I throw the kunai at a specific frame of Tracer's breathing animation, it might be a critical. Because yeah, head projectile hitboxes are stupid in multiple ways, both good and bad and basically impossible this to accurately measure like your intention like nah bro work. all projectiles will use the same hitbox there's no special kuriko exclusive baby mode hitbox it's just a projectile no, hitbox I'm... it might not even work that way anymore there there definitely are different hitbox sizes so yet again you're i don't think you know this game i'll be real with wants to and then of course projectiles have an actual size to them compared to hit scan which basically just draws a straight yeah, line you're right. from your weapon to where you know every and then listen that... every character can have a unique size for a hitbox, so this is incorrect. Intersects with the hitbox, then that's a hit. Meanwhile, because projectiles have travel time, they projectiles have their own hitbox as well that can vary in size. And then if that intersects the player hitbox, so it, stupid. It, it's very cool when posted the actual hitbox for Tracer, including videos which I won't show, but it's very cool to see because yes, this is the actual hitbox used in game for hit detection for Tracer. For so people aiming Tracer's legs, by the way. Projectile. Okay, so small hitbox rant over. Okay, okay, yeah, wait, wait. So yes, this is this is Tracer's hitbox. Yes, but different characters have different hitbox sizes for their weapons. Hanzo's projectile size hitbox has been changed many, many times. So there's two variables. It's not just this. It's also how big is the projectile that you're shooting. Kiriko's is bigger than any of the other ones, and it's incredibly noticeable. The only one comparable to that is Mei's Icicle. But now back to Kuriko and her ballot. Yuzu, I think, is one of the most misunderstood abilities in the entire game, because I think that people just hear invulnerability, and their brain just turns off, and they think, damn, that's broken. When in reality, the invuln lasts for a very small period of it time. It doesn't matter. Which makes it doesn't matter, because it still changes a breakpoint. It automatically denies the burst impact when this game has become about burst impact. There's no way for the enemy player to outplay it. So no, it doesn't matter. Even if it's for a tenth of a second, it doesn't matter. It still outplays them, and there's no way for them to overpower the ability, unlike other abilities in the game. Is it very inconsistent in terms of how much value it's you're not actually going to get out of it? The most recent patch, they not nerfed Suzu by it's removing, net buff. you know, point two. By the way, this was a net buff. This ended up being a net buff. Because again, this point, this, these point two seconds don't matter. Because you can, you, you can easily take the duels for free at the start of a fight still, and now you get healed even more. This was a net buff. Somehow, some way, they did that. So I don't. Seconds know. from the invulnerability, and then giving it forty more healing, and like that's a net buff. You take the guaranteed value yeah. from healing over the potential value of an invulnerability any day. Like if I'm low, at least not in a situation where there is an. And easy you still way are to invulnerable, the invulnerability. by the way to avoid a massive amount of damage, such as, you know, Sigma's Flux, maybe some kind of, you know, big Grav combo or ultimate. And even then, if you're in a Grav and you throw Suzu, you're probably still gonna die immediately afterwards because Grav lasts for far longer than the invulnerability. Yeah, Graviton Surge and ultimate, by the way, an ultimate ability against your ability. Like, the fact that we're even at the point where we have to compare Suzu and ability to an ultimate is fucking absurd. Between a half- And which, by the way, Suzu absolutely can prevent kills in a Grav. Second of invuln and 70 health. You only get one of them. It's not like this is a good comparison, but I think it kind of paints the picture of why the healing is better. If you were low and you pick the invuln, then you'll be able to survive one. I agree. Let's remove the invulnerability. You don't know if he's going to just miss anyways or not. Meanwhile, if you took 70 health, you can tank an additional bullet that's a non-crit, no matter what happens. 
he could miss two bullets and you'd still get the value from the healing. Whereas if he's going to miss the bullet that you use the invuln for, you don't really get value out of it in a weird kind of way. I don't know, maybe this isn't the best comparison to use. It's, it's not know. a terrible one. The point I'm trying he's to not make wrong is that, that receiving healing is guaranteed value. That health will always be with you. So well, is so is the invuln. Vulnerability is temporary value. If you can explain Okay, well it, it you could say you could say the healing's temporary value too. Like you're are like the the invulnerability also denies that shot, right? Like it, it, it's just I don't know, man. This is just this is just silly. Because of that, if I were to change this ability, I would just say remove the invulnerability completely. That's not I wrong. I don't think that it matters. I feel like you can't increase. It, it does. It does matter. It absolutely does matter. By the way, but. The, the invuln should get removed 100%. Because if you're ever playing the game against a hero that does not inflict a negative status effect, it's just a dead cooldown, which is the whole reason why it has the invulnerability. So you have to make it do something outside of that. So I feel like flat healing would be fine because people seem to complain a lot about invulnerability, even though there's so many other abilities that just do the same thing as Suzu, but better. If you're talking about personal protection abilities, uh, Reaper's Wraith Form, Genji's Deflect. I mean, technically there's like three different heroes that can damage Gen- What? What are you smoking? Reaper Wraith, you are not a threat. You cannot attack. Genji Deflect can be pierced by half the abilities in the game and only blocks frontal damage. Holy shit. Support players are delusional. This is what happens when you baby a role for six years. They don't understand a thing about fundamental exchanges in Overwatch. They don't understand a thing. Respectfully, his knowledge level to make these comparisons, I would say is low masters at best. The fact that you think Suzu is remotely comparable to Reaper Wraith, well, Kiriko can be invulnerable and still shoot you. She can TP away. Reaper, Reaper can't do anything. He's not a threat. Genji is not a threat unless you make him one when he deflects, and it can be pierced by half the heroes in the game. Top 500? This just goes to show you how boosted support players are. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. There's no universe of top 500 players should ever think that, that, that those are comparable. And people, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, support players out there. But, like, I'm just going to call it how it is. That's, that's who I am. I, I don't think your role identity should be removed. I love playing support. I played the role in pro play. But that is absolutely fucking delusional. Holy shit but like he can even deflect melee weapons so he deflects almost everything and deflect and he's not a threat to all damage from the front i mean with exceptions it's also one Wait, of what what are you saying deflect makes you immune to all damage in the front well with exceptions so it doesn't make you immune to damage what what oh my god dude a lower cooldown, it lasts for longer than Suzu does, and it also deflects damage, meaning it has a lot of offensive value as well. You can throw back entire ultimate abilities with it. A better comparison and that to never Suzu, happens. Which is that never happens. That never, ever, 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 ever happens. You have to look at the consistency at which it happens. Suzu gets value every time you use it. Deflect very rarely ever gets value, and deflect is the ability that's still punishable, and Suzu isn't. What are you smoking? If you're fighting against someone, you're probably in more danger if they get Zarya bubbled than if they get Suzu. To be fair to him, though, he did agree that the invong should get removed, and if the invong gets removed, then Suzu is pierceable, and that would make it way more fair. Because a Zarya bubble is basically two seconds of you can't damage them, well... Suzu is only half a second. And even if you. And one is a tank ability that's designed to enable engages, and the other is a support and vulnerability that's designed to deny value. Denial abilities ruined Overwatch. Do decide to try and destroy Bubble. You're first going to have to use ammo to do so, meaning that you might be forced to reload before you can finish off the target after destroying the Bubble. And also, at the bare minimum, it's still going to last longer than Suzu's invulnerability does. So, yeah, you can ignore me. I'm just some deranged lunatic that's making a YouTube video right now. Because I did just want to talk about projectiles and fall off and how it's balanced. And he, and he, he was, I that. actually do think he was right about damage and fall offs, but by the way. And why projectiles get to have no fall off damage while Hitchcan does, but then there's always some exceptions. But instead, it just turned into Kiriko video and then metro just had to post a twitter video so yeah just tldr i think suzu is very overrated compared to the number of other abilities in the game either suzu is the single best ability ever put in overwatch and it's not close it's not close to be clear kiriko suzu and i've been a rank one player many times across multiple roles multiple heroes all right kiriko suzu is by far the best ability ever added in any pro player would agree with you personal abilities that heroes have that only impact themselves Ever. or you know zarya ally bubble are all just as good if not better oh and God, protection is suzu is kind of really overrated as an ability because the same thing with projectiles oh people are God. like oh yeah it could 
block like 10 the, these are the players that are allowed to get into top 500 how is this player allowed to be top 500 with absolutely zero understanding of the game this guy has zero understanding of the game around him and this proves my point Listen, I'm not trying to disrespect you, by the way, man. Like, I'm sure you're a great guy. I'm not trying to flame you as a person, but as a player, you are wrong. And this is why support as a role is broken. The support role allows players to get to top 500 with zero game understanding. This guy understands nothing about Overwatch. And that's because all of their abilities override player skill. And the design of supports, eat from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, which is why Overwatch 2 feels like shit right now, is because the same people who fucked up the previous game kept doing the exact same thing that fucked up the previous game in this game, and the format change only saved them by two seasons. It ripped the band-aid off, but they never sat down and fundamentally fixed it. This should tell you everything you need to know about the support role, because if Suzu doesn't override everything... And Swift Step doesn't let you TP through walls, and she's Kiriko's playing by the same rules as every other DPS character in the game and every other tank character in the game. Then this player would never reach top 500. Never. There's I refuse to believe that a player can be this wrong about the game and be this high rank. I refuse to believe it. It's annoying once broken. you get to high roll, but that's balanced out. In, I mean, balance in quotation marks out by the lows. But you don't see the lows, you only see the highs. So people have a very skewed perception of her as a character and just think she's broken. And I'll she talk is. about why that's a really bad thing for the game. But first, to finish she, off her ability, she has no risk. Swift Step. I hate this ability. This is the one ability I don't like because it basically forces Kriko to have a stupid flanker playstyle, which I don't really like for supporting. I like to actually play the game like a support and not a third DPS. That's the reason why I enjoy playing support is because it's actually different from every other first person suitor on the market. And that's your fair. Your objective Valid. is completely different. Instead Valid. of trying to confirm kills, you're more trying to well, you are the confirming kills value that your team is getting through timing abilities and being at the right place in the right time and learning when and how to Okay, yeah, but but as Kiriko, you don't have to be in the right place at the right time. And that's the big point. I think he agrees with this too. Like you can go wherever you want because you can just swift step through walls. Like it's it's absurd. But back to swift step, I just do not like it as an ability. It's broken because it's a get out of jail free card because you can just teleport to any ally. Yes. The problem is teleporting to any ally through walls is kind of insanely strong, but at the same time, it's oh. a massive limit to how you can use the ability. Because let's say you're actually trying to play Kiriko like a support and not like a third DPS, where you maybe you try and press her a character from brains, you try and heal people, you don't go on flanks. Say you get you know the tracers on you. He's right about you this have by two the way. Options for swift step: teleport to your other support who's probably right next to you, or or teleport to your front line. One of these options basically does nothing and is usually the one you take because the other option You want to take the forward angle as Kiri so you have a place to teleport back. I, I don't think it's a problem as long as it's in line of sight only. I think that's okay. Because you're already limited to only having four potential targets to use it on. Further limiting that will basically make it unusable. The only thing that they- Huh. It's almost like if there was a second tank in the game like, maybe, maybe that would give it the use cases that it needs. I don't know. Just thought. I mean, what do I know, though? Because like, you basically have to completely rework the ability into something different because limiting the range is the only way you can balance it without just straight up killing the ability. And even if you do nerf the range, there will still be a lot of times where Kriko can kind of just get out of jail for free because a teammate is close enough. Especially on certain maps. The thing is, that's Kiri's identity the to an extent. There could just be a very close by place that's so very I, safe I think, that you can teleport okay, to. My, my hot take is like Swift Step is the easiest ability to fix by just making it line of sight. Just make it line of sight and it's cake, right? Suzu's the harder one. In 5v5, the person that has to go do that and force the angle space is the DPS hero. Heroes where you at the skill floor of Kiriko have an enormous advantage against. I don't care what anybody says. Kiriko is the best 1v1 character in the game, period, point blank. So instead of the off tank also being at low risk, forcing that angle against the Kiriko in Overwatch 1, if Kiriko was in Overwatch 1, it's now the DPS who had our a, a default massive disadvantage because the Kiriko has li literally looks down and presses E on herself, which is super easy to do mechanically. It's probably the easiest thing to do mechanically. She can TP out of any engage and be fine. And don't sit there and tell me, oh, well, you forced the cooldown, so it's valuable. If I was dueling a DPS there, I could get a kill and win the fight even in Overwatch 1. If I was dealing an off-tank there, I could get to kill him in the fight because off-tanks were punishable back in Overwatch 1. Also, if I took the duel with you, then now I also don't have any cooldowns, so I also have to wait for my cooldowns to come back too. 
So like it's it's a it's a skill floor shitty experience that has zero skill expression and denies playmaking in the game for no reason. And that makes the game connect four, not chess. It makes the game brain dead. It's what was special about Overwatch and Overwatch One and Five v Five and Overwatch Two and the hero design in the games have progressively taken the game more and more away from that beautiful aspect of it that made the game fun and rewarding and feel fair to all players. So yeah, it, it is broken. It is broken and so will value in tech and this is mainly bad because it makes it so that blizzard can't really fix the character because like it or not blizzard has yeah, clearly can. been listening to the community a fair amount in terms of balance the recent maga nerfs they basically said within a day that they were going to roll back one of them before they even get data just because people did not like that change i still think because he was paid to win and they knew he was paid to win and it was a disaster that he was pay to win. You don't have to listen to the community to realize you made a raid boss tank that was behind a pay slash paywall and then recognize you have to nerf it. Never should have happened to begin with if they were competent. I think they made a mistake because they did not remove some of the damage resist from his cardiac overdrive when they gave him a lot more armor. But besides that, Blizzard is actually listening to the community. And it becomes a problem when people think a character is overpowered when they're actually underperforming. Because often people just say overpowered or broken when they really just means they're annoying or obnoxious just, to play. And again, just because Kiriko has a negative win rate in bronze, like Wid Widowmaker and Sombra have negative win rates in bronze. Are they bad heroes? I mean, I can pull this up right now. Let's look at hero stats here. We'll go competitive. Let's look at all, let's look at, uh, let's look at skill tiers. Let's look at GM, right? We'll look at supports. Let's look at some supports. Ana, Ana has a 12% pick rate and a 50% win rate in GM. Kiriko is a 49.89. This is minuscule. This is absolutely minuscule. And look at Kiriko's KDA too. Wow, Jesus. Right, or Moira, for example. What about in bronze? Oh, well, Ana has a 44% win rate in bronze, so we should buffer. Like, like look at this. Her, her, her win rate in bronze is 44%. But in GM, it's 50. So should we buff Ana because bronze players can't use her? It's the same thing for Kiriko, right? Even in GM, some of these kids are just shit with her because you don't actually have to be good to climb. And I'm all for changing Kiriko to maybe help her win rate in some ways. Like if you could nerf Suzu, right? You want to fix your win rate and make it fair for everybody? How about this? How about you nerf Suzu, you nerf Swift Step, but you give Kitsune some buffs or something like that. There are plenty of options to do this, right? Plenty. There's a way to solve both. But because the devs don't understand the game and they don't understand what actually makes the matchups unfair and frustrating to play against, they never will because they don't get it, right? It, it, it's simple. And the, the, stats, and that just the, becomes the stats don't reflect what happens in the one-on-one. -on -one. And if there was a 1v1 ranked ladder, by the way, Kiriko's win rate would be insanely high. Point and not, you know, there are parts of this character's kit that are not fun to play against. We need to change yeah, them. Yeah, let, 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 let me rephrase that. There are parts of Kiriko's kits that are broken and unfair and they need to be changed. So they have to just keep doing these weird micro half nerfs to try and appeal to people while also buffing her. Kind of like the chains to Suzu. But even then, I saw a lot of people on Twitter being like, why did they buff Suzu? I like the nerf, but why did they buff it? And they're buffing it because he's not really broken. I mean, they can't change broken. her kunai at all because it's already a super inconsistent weapon. If they were Actually, you it, can. Also Actually, you can. You probably, if you want to help these little noobs get better at Kiriko, Adjust her base damage so body shots are worth more and gut Suzu. Remove the invulnerability and make it so Swift Staff can't TP through walls. And the character's probably in a much better spot because the lower rank noobs could be more consistent with her. And the duels become much more fair because there's no overrides and get out of jail freeze. You actually have to take it and be smart. It's the best of both worlds, baby. People think that she's overpowered, and if they buff her, people are going to go ballistic. Arisa's another character that's in a similar boat where she's obnoxious to play against, no, but they she's can't not. really in good faith nerf her no, she's because not. she is by far the worst performing tank in the entire game. No, a lot of no. that could just be from people thinking that counter No. Orisa doesn't win duels for free. Orisa has no get out of jail free cards. They're completely different. Not even in the same league. And that Orisa counters like every character. When in reality, that almost never works. They bust out the Orisa and then start to lose even harder. Even end of season seven, I just played a lot of Kiriko with Roadhog because my friend wanted to play Roadhog. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to play Kiriko and enable you because I don't really play this character much anymore. Ended and up that's your identity like in the game. And 15 and getting both accounts to Grandmaster 1. I mean, technically his got to GM1. Mine was stuck at GM2 because we went like five and two one time and I de-ranked for some reason. But you get the idea. He was hyped whenever people tried to counterpick Orisa because it literally never worked a single time. 
people would just counter pick Orisa into instant lose because the game just does not work like that. And that also gets into why Kriko I'd say is strong right now, because he's just an extremely good heal bot character, one of the best in the game. Suzu negates the one weakness that Roadhog and Maga have, Biotic Grenade. And that's, and also that's Kiri's ultimate. identity, and she can maintain that and have her be fair as well in the duels. Still really good. People forget that when Kiriko first came out, and she had, you know, 120 damage criticals, the invulnerability from Suzu lasted almost a full second, and the general consensus among Overwatch League players and professionals was that she was very mediocre. She was a mediocre character with an incredible criticals, the invulnerability from Suzu lasted almost a full second, and the general consensus among Overwatch League players and professionals was that she was very mediocre. She was a mediocre character with an incredibly broken ultimate, and basically the entire meta for that point in time. Huh. I wonder if there was a streamer or pro player who didn't say that and disagreed with everybody and called it out. I wonder if there was somebody who stuck to their guns from the moment he saw the character in the close NDA call. I wonder if there was somebody who did that. I have been right on the money about every single one of my takes for these broken supports for six goddamn years. So I'm not letting anybody get away with that statement. Everybody tried to tell me, oh, Sumito, it's fine. It only lasts for one second. Oh, Sam, it's okay. You have to time it. And do you know what I told everybody? Every, like, literally every creator was trying to gang up on me. That gang up on me, like... Some of them, some some of my colleagues were saying it nicely, and you know what? I looked them in the eye. I said, "I said you're wrong," and here we are again, the same old song and dance. Call me Aerosmith, and I am gonna get a little egocentric here, cause God damn it, I've been right every time. I have been right every time. The moment I saw it, pro coaches were arguing with me, saying, "Nah, Kiri won't be meta." You can just bap window the Kitsune, and I said the Kitsune would run right over the bap window. Oh, you nerf Kitsune? It's not gonna matter. Because the Suzu wins in the mid-fight over everything. I said this from day fucking one. It makes me so mad to, to see this narrative that pro players thought she was mid. No pro player thought she was mid. Nobody. She was the best hero in the game. Everybody said this, right? And Kitsune stuck out like a sore thumb and it was really strong. But that didn't take away from Suzu, and I fucking called that. Time was Again. just built around which characters could use Kiriko's ultimate the best, which is why we had Winston and Reaper. With the three times cooldown reduction that Kiriko's ultimate had back then, you could have, you know, a bubble up all the time as Winston. You could jump and then instantly have your jump back in one and a half seconds. And the goofy thing was, was that you kept the buff of the ultimate for, you know, like a second and a half after leaving it. Yeah, so you could I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Onto, you know, an Ana or another support. Bubble, kill them. As soon as you kill them, you're already going to have your ultimate back. And you're going to kill them very fast because you still get the increased damage from the ultimate, from the fire rate as Winston. So you can just jump on them, kill them, and then immediately jump back into the ultimate. And then get the buff again and get your jump cooldown back instantly. And then also get your bubble cooldown back in like two seconds. And then Reaper the same thing. You use your ultimate with Kriko's ultimate. It's yeah, that insanely was really good. good. Reaper yeah. with 50% yeah, yeah, faster fire rate and it movement is. speed. And, 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 and he, he is right about this. He is right about this. Life steal. And He's like, yeah, yes. Kitsune was busted, but... I want the record to show that myself and several other pro players sat there and said, it's not just Kitsune, it is fucking Suzu. Suzu is the best ability ever put in the game. Of course, you ran Sojoin because Sojoin was basically broken. You'd use her with every comp. And then the other support, I believe, was a Lucio to kind of tie the comp together and speed around both the Reaper as well as the Winston. And also was good because you don't infringe like, on you the You don't want to change that Kriko identity provided, Kriko that you the just saw right there. You just farm all one of the best Krikos in Overwatch League was Fielder. And, and they basically never threw a single Kunai because, I mean, that just wasn't how you play the character. You just yeah, you heal bot, it, you yeah. get ultimate and you try and maximize the amount of value that, that you was, get. At the time, season. that was and the most efficient way to play the, the same character. Way right now. It's mainly only worth it no. to run with a hero like a Roadhog or Not Maga, ranked. where they basically want a pocket at all times, and pocketing them also gives you your ultimate, which is still a pretty strong ultimate. There's a couple ways to do it. You can get it, like, extremely fast, and you basically just heal bot. She's so with versatile. Roadhog, you just heal bot the Roadhog, cleanse him if he gets anti-ed. You just use Kunai if he ever hooks someone to help him confirm the kill, because he doesn't really get the one shot off of hook anymore, and then that's just how you play the character. Same thing with Maga. You just hold right-click on the Maga, you follow him around, and then you maybe like throw out one kunai between wrong. every heal. And, and, to, and, and, know, and do you know why? Do you know why it's like that? Because of five v five. Because five v five forces that. Because your tanks just absorb so much damage by themselves, and there's no tank exchange that's meaningful that they can like mitigate damage for each other. That support is kind of getting forced to that one dimensional play style, right? I don't think that's Kiri's true potential. And, like, where I will give him credit is he, he does kind of understand her hero identity. And I'll, I'll let him keep talking, but he, he is right about that kind of play style being viable. Maybe get some free damage on someone. 
or get a pick on a low health target. And then Maga actually synergizes insanely well with Kuriko Ultimate right. because he heals and sustains himself off of dealing damage. He's right. And Kuriko does, Ultimate yeah. gives you 50% He's the same as Reaper. He's Reaper, but tank. heal himself even faster. And then, of course, he also gets his Cardiac Overdrive back faster after he uses it. Yeah, so a character right. that's actually seeing success and is kind of broken right now, but not for any of the reasons that people are complaining about on Twitter. So yeah, I feel like that concludes this. Not yeah, just so, so let me let me say this. Um, first off, I, I want to apologize if I got a little too heated, buddy. I, I do not mean to be coming for you personally. I just get very into these arguments and you seem like a great guy. You know, I, I, I that's not my intent. And if I came off like that, I, I apologize. That's not my goal. I get very animated with this stuff and I've had so many people dog on me and doubt my opinions that I've been proven right so much that I've got a chip on my shoulder and that can make me seem like a little bit of an ass sometimes. I admit it completely. So I'm sorry if they, I, I don't want to come off that way. That's on me, brother, if I did. So let, let's talk about what he's right about first. Um, I, I, I think he's right about kunai damage. I wouldn't change that because you want the like overwatch is about playmaking not play denial, right? All the like they should focus on the play denial abilities in the game You don't want to remove Kiriko's ability to make plays offensively Because that's what makes the game so beautiful and makes her like a very unique and fun support Like I wouldn't want to change that because hitting kunai's feels great that response and feedback feels great You shouldn't change that because you want people to make plays so I agree with him about the damage now he was completely wrong about the Metro clip. I'm not going to go into details about that anymore. Like, if you go back and watch that section, if you want to hear that, that, and that is the best way to play the game, by the way. Um, or sorry, that is an optimal way to play the game if you're one of the best players in the game. And that option is removed at the skill floor of Kiriko, regardless of that player is actually good. Um, the hitboxes section was complete nonsense. Um, the balance of Suzu was also nonsense. He doesn't understand how powerful override abilities are, and good players abuse the shit out of them, which is why you mostly see the high-ranked players complaining about it and the low-ranked players complaining about it, and I think it would be, we agree that the invulnerability should go away, and that would allow for more flexibility in other parts of Kiriko's kit, whether it be in healing or, or whatever it may be. The invulnerability, invulnerability aspect should go away, but to be clear, Kiriko Suzu undoubtedly, undoubtedly is the strongest ability ever added to Overwatch, and it's not close. The second is Immortality Field. Um, Swift Step is stupid. I agree. They should change it. Um, and if they wanted a more diverse gameplay loop, they got to add the off-tank rollback. Um, how community perception can ruin the game? Uh, you, you talk about them nerfing Mauga as if that was listening to the community. Like, you don't have to listen to the community to know you put a pay-to-win hero in the game, right? You know, it's, it's, it's absurd. And then Kiriko's power level, like... Her, her win rates don't accurately – like, just because the outcome of, uh, of, her, of her win rate is 49.5%, which is minuscule, does not mean the means as to which she duels. Like, she, that's, she, that's why she's a poorly designed character, right? That's why she's a poorly designed character. Because, again, they're trying to figure out how to do all this stuff, but, they, like, again, because she just by default can win all these duels, they, they can't afford to give her power at her skill floor or in a more consistent way that would make her – be able to do better in most ranks and the, the answer to that is to lower the skill floor of the character which is probably to make body shots a little bit better encourage some damage right but take away power from the suzu uh, maybe you could lower the cooldown a little bit to let her use it more frequently so she can put out more healing while weaving in damage so like if you were throwing damage kunais that could do better body shot damage if suzu doesn't make people invulnerable anymore you could lower the cooldown on that so she has more burst healing output so if you decide to weave in some damage for a couple seconds and you have Suzu, you can use your Suzu to bail yourself out if you want to weave in some kunai. And here's the reality about Kiriko too. She shouldn't be an easy character. Her win rate should be negative in most ranks because you have to you should have to be an incredibly well-rounded player to get value on her. Right? She she, she should be like Ana, where Ana's win rate goes up the higher up you go in the ranks. That's what Kiriko should be. She shouldn't be some Moira. She's the opposite of Moira, right? So, you know, the idea that her win rate accurately reflects the strength of the character and the means as to whether or not she's fair. When I picked up Kiriko in Season 1 and even picked her up now, my win rate's 70%. Like, when in the right hands, it very clearly is broken. And you can look to the pro players because you can't balance. You can't balance off of lack of skill. Because the player is so bad, your balance changes won't actually affect them because the variable that's making them not be able to output things is not the character design or the ability balance. It's their own skill, which is why you can't accurately balance for low-ranked players. You have to balance for high-ranked players because that's the only place the balance is really, really effective, right? Unless you're particularly changing characters at the skill floor, which Blizzard is infamously bad at. If you look at Sojourn, look at Brigida, right? So, yeah, th this video just full of a ton of inaccurate opinions and a lack of a fundamental understanding of the game. Um, some things were correct, particularly the damage. 
he was right about not destroying the identity of the character because that's something you learn via playing the character, and I agree with him, but his broader view of the game is completely wrong. I've never seen anything like it. Oh my goodness. Do yourself the favor. Check this stuff out. It's going to help out the channel. It will help you. And it's it's actually a really sick looking game. So thanks to Sean for the video today, guys. Everything you need is going to be down in the description. Check it out. War Thunder. Freaking sick game. Play War Thunder for free right now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link. And you'll get the large bonus pack using that link. It's all down in the description. Check it out, guys. Thanks for sponsoring today's video. Peace out.